Manager at AFTA. We are really pleased to have you on today's webinar, which is the third webinar in a series of um, sessions hosted by Google and specifically designed for you, our travel agent audience. Today we're going to be looking specifically at understanding the travel industry and, and trends online. Um, and I'm, before I introduce you to um, our host today, I'm just going to remind you um, that there are two more uh, webinars in the series. The next diary note date for your diary is the 8th of November. And, um, and then the following one after that will be late November around the 23rd. So uh, keep an eye out for our notifications so that you can register. Just a reminder that we record the session so that you can jump online at after.com.au and re-watch the webinar at your convenience. You are on mute, but you do have a question toolbox, so feel free to log a question in there and at the end of the webinar we will address your question. So now I'm very pleased to hand over to Brittany. Brittany is the Business Acquisition Manager at Google and is going to take you through some really interesting content. Thanks, Brittany. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Joe. And thanks for everyone for dialing in for the webinar today. As Joe mentioned, I sit on the Business Acquisition team within Google there. Uh, so that's underneath the advertising arm within Google, so Google AdWords. Um, as Joe mentioned, today's series will focus on about what is happening in the travel industry. How do our consumers behave here? What kind of seasonal opportunities there may be? And then we'll finish off on some tools that you can use to access these insights. Uh, as Joe mentioned, if you do have any questions, feel free to use that toolbox. And at the end of the session, I will touch on them there. Perfect. So let's dive right into things. Industry insights. What are we seeing within uh, not only the Australian market, but the travel industry itself. So you've probably already heard from the previous sessions, if you've dialed into those, that there is a lot of online activity in Australia. We don't just go online anymore, we actually more live online. Out of 23 million people in Australia, 85% have access to the internet. And of this, this is mainly contributed by smartphone uh, proliferation in the past couple of years. We can see that 77% of user, internet users have a smartphone. I think about my little cousins and my grandparents, and they're both, no matter what age of the spectrum, they both have iPhones now or Androids. And if we check at our own behavior, we're constantly checking our device. On average, do you check your phone 150 times per day. And I know for myself, I'm probably much higher than that. I actually have two mobile devices, I know. <laughs> I'm one of those. <laughs> Do you remember the last time you have ever left your phone at home? And you might be heading to the office or dropping the kids off. How empty, how nervous you start to feel. How will you get through your day without <laughs> your mobile device? We don't only use our phones to watch videos or share content anymore, but we're also using it for research and to make active decisions, purchasing decisions. So we know that 30% of people are online purchasers. That's almost one in three. And we're seeing similar trends across the travel industry. Throughout the travel sales cycle, the internet can play a key role in every part, especially mobile. When I think about myself, when I dream about my next vacation, I'm inspired by my favorite photographers I'm seeing on my social media platforms, by pictures from my friends from the recent trips. And then I start to do my research. I start to look at reviews of places, things to do, start to comparison shop a bit, see what I can actually afford and the time that I have to do this. And this is mostly happening online for myself. And then I go to book. And booking is usually, again, online for me. I'm pretty busy on the train. The time change also makes things very difficult. <laughs> so I find I'm online is one of the easiest ways to get this done quickly. And then when I'm actually at the destination, I want to connect with the locals. I want to go to the top 10 restaurants. I want to go to the best tour company. I want to get all those experiences. And then I want to share it with my friends and family back home. I want 
them to be a part of my trip as well. During all these different touch points, I'm online for the most, most of these. But this is just my story. What do the rest of Australians really feel? Well, we ran the survey and asked the following question. Which, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Which of the following have you used to seek or obtain travel information in the last 12 months? What we can see is that 87% of travelers use the internet to plan their travel. If you think about your last trip, this probably won't be much of a surprise there. Some of the platforms we're seeing on there is Google websites. And the second one there, the third one actually, is the friend colleague. So what's interesting to note is although we usually use friends and family as the most reliable resource, the internet is the second most chosen point for a reliable source. And that's because of the transparency of it. There's good reviews, there's bad reviews. So those family and friends do come first, the internet is very important as well. So consumers are using both mobile and desktop devices when researching and booking travel. When you look at the two circles here on the far right hand side of the page, we see agencies there at the top and cruises there at the bottom. And they're in line with the overall proportion of mobile versus desktop usage. They look quite similar, don't they? But let's look at the airline industry. And this one's on the bottom left hand side here, commercial airlines. And what we can see is there's a greater share from desktops than there is from mobile. Why is this? Well, this might be due to the comparison shopping behavior we see more on the online for the airline side of the business rather than agencies and, and cruises. Uh, we also have destination and accommodation segment. This is on the top left-hand corner there. And there's a high percentage of mobile visits that's driven by consumers searching for things to do or places to eat while they're traveling. So you can imagine if you're on a trip, your mobile phone is probably the most convenient thing there. So if you're looking for top 10 restaurants there in your local area, you're probably going to use your mobile device. With access to more information across devices, one area we see affected is the past purchase. So the booking process is no longer confined to the desktop as it was just a few years ago. It's now become less linear of a process. We use multiple devices during the research and booking phases. What we're seeing is that over 50%, 52 actually, of people start planning their trip on one device, but may book on another. This could be you're on the train or on the bus on your way to work. You're researching about your next family holiday vacation. You get to the office, and then that's when you actually book. But what does this all mean for your business? This means there's more opportunity for your brand to connect with your customer at these different touch points. Brands must be easily visible on all screens in order to capture your customer as they move between devices. It's really imperative for your experience on your desktop to seamlessly match your mobile strategy. But why is this? And it's because as customers, we really become more demanding and expect nothing less. When we start our research on our tablet or our mobile, go to our computer at work, and then maybe go back to our computer at home, we expect to pick up our research right where we left off. Especially in the saturated industry, such as travel, with lots of competition and lots and lots of options, you want your brand to stand out for the right reasons. You want it to be easy, seamless, one experience. So mobile-friendly sites really do have a major impact on your overall website engagement. So it's really important to make sure that user experience with your website is, as I said, seamless across desktop and mobile. It's time to think about your website. Is it mobile-friendly? Is it, does it even exist? <laughs> In a study done by Google, the research, uh, the results, for this alone emphasizes the importance of mobile for your business. 
So let's take a look at the, the little circle there on the left, the green one. And this is people who do have a mobile site. Oh, three quarters of the people are more likely to return if your site is mobile friendly. If you think about your own experiences, you can probably relate because we've all been to a site that hasn't been mobile friendly and haven't completed the actions because it's been so overall frustrating. Which brings me nicely to the graph on the right, the ones in red. So these are the ones on the opposite side of the spectrum. They have no mobile sites. And half their users are feeling frustrated and less likely to engage with the company again. This branding hole. So even if you do update your site and do make it mobile friendly, that past experience, you could be losing potential clientele from that. What value does a mobile site add to your business? So we, we spoke a bit about having a site itself, but it's not just that. It has to be an adequate site. It has to be fast. In 2012, Google started actually identifying sites that were mobile friendly and labeling them in the search results. So what this means is if you did a Google search, typed in travel to Bali, and a bunch of different companies came up, and you're on your mobile device, there'd be a little icon on the side there labeling it if it's mobile friendly or not. After this change, we saw a few changes and many businesses were affected. What we saw after this labeling was that if you didn't have a mobile-friendly site, we saw a 33% decrease in interaction. That's almost one-third that one of people not going to interacting with your company or with your site. It also affected your organic ranking. So you started to drop. 27% drop. And then we had an increase in bounce rate. Bounce rate is when someone goes to your site and they leave quite shortly. That may be because the site is taking too long to load or images or forms aren't looking right. And then 10% loss in mobile site traffic. That's 10%, almost 10% of people not even just going to your site. Can your business afford that? So as I was mentioning before, speed really kills. Just ask yourself, have you ever abandoned a site because a page has taken too long to load? I know I have. What we're seeing is just in a one second delay in load time can increase your bounce rate by 8.3%. That means 8.3% people who arrive at your site are leaving quite shortly after because it's taking too long to load. One second will de decrease page views by 9.4%. Every page counts, but so does every second. And every second adds up. And then we'll see no surprises there. This all results in a decrease of conversion by 3.5%. If you don't know how good your site is, you can test it. My little rule of thumb is I type it, test my site into Google search, and you'll see some page options come up. But you're always welcome to use R, which is testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. So here we're going to go into a little case study. Booking.com. According to them, every one in two traveler journeys start on a mobile device. And they're seeing this particularly because of last minute travel plans. Travelers who book on a mobile device are more likely, as I said, to book last minute, with three quarters of them same day booking, booking happening on a mobile device. So the CMO here is going to take us through their marketing strategy and how they've driven it around mobile. Mobile 
now we start with the mobile device. With the mobile device, people tend to make movies way more at the last minute than they did before. In the first quarter of this year, roughly three quarters of all bookings made for an arrival the same day were made from the mobile device. So we created an actual shift for this. Looking now, this gator to the first by last minute shop for the egg. Those people who are in destination didn't plan anything. At some point, then it will be anything. Oh, I need a place to stay. So what we saw from there is Booking.com saw the opportunity in mobile. They saw a lot of their bookings were coming through mobile, and so they made their marketing strategy around that. We're seeing the same thing at Google. So if we look into the industry trends, I'm going to divide it up a little bit here. This first section is about air, then we're going to get into cruises, and then we're going to look at accommodation. Across all, Queries are growing year on year, and this is significantly driven by mobile. So looking at the graph, you can see at the bottom we have the younger years, 2013 in the red, and then up at the top there we have purple, 2016. So year over year we are seeing an increase in query volume. And then almost 30% of it is driven by mobile growth. Those are huge numbers. I pull these numbers across industries all the time. We are seeing this across industry, mobile is driving the growth. Looking at the cruise industry, we're seeing the same thing. Year over year, we're getting more and more search queries. People are going online to do their booking. And again, this number, 37%, is driven by growth in mobile. That is substantial. And hotels, again, quite similar. 2016 is the line, the purple line right at the top there, and we see a 14% year-on-year growth. That means this time last year, we're seeing, we have seen a 14% increase. And again, mobile is the thing driving that, as it grew by 24%. This is compared to 12% in the computer. So we've gone through a lot of graphs and trends and insights, but what can we really take away from this? And what can you really do for your marketing strategy? So key takeaways are here. Your audience is online and across devices. So it is imperative to have a consistent strategy on both desktop and mobile. Users are expecting a seamless experience, so deliver that. We don't go online anymore. We do really, truly live online. Our customers now expect us to have a seamless transition. We can start on our tablet, and we can finish on a desktop and pick things right back up. Query growth is driven by mobile. You are in a growing, growing industry. We just saw from the last three graphs, year after year, we've seen an increase. 
and this increase is driven by mobile search. So whether it be researching your next trip or booking your flight, mobile will play a key role in your business strategy. So what can we do now? With key periods such as summer and Christmas around the corner, what changes can you make today to make an impact for this upcoming season? So let's talk about the holidays. <laughs> this is my favorite time of year. It's just around the corner. And what can we do to really prepare and take advantage of it? Well, this probably won't come as any surprise to you, but we one in four Australians choose to take their annual leave in December and January. I know for myself, whenever I send emails at this time of year, I'm flooded back with out-of-office statuses during this period. So for me, there's no surprises at all. And what can we do during this period? So during the summer, what we've noticed is that we're on our mobile phones more and more. So taking a look at the graph here, October is the blue line at the bottom there. We have November in green, and then January in yellow, and December in red. So we, what we're seeing is we get closer to Christmas, December being the highest there, we're spending more and more time on mobile. But there is a peak. Even on the weekends, we spend even more time on our mobile devices. So it's important to be there for these, for your audience, for these kind of key periods, and take advantage of these higher traffic. Another key opportunity, and this one I found really interesting, is between Christmas at the end and end of January. Travel searches are on average 14% higher from Christmas Day to January compared to any other time of the year. That's huge. This is a substantial opportunity to take advantage of the increase in volume. Whether it be your customer wants to plan their next family holiday because they've just had such a great time in the one they're on now, or maybe it's the fear of going back to work but it inspires them to plan their next adventure. It's important to be there for these moments and connect with your audience on their terms on their time when they're looking for you. So although Christmas um, is one of the highest days throughout the year for travel searches, uh, there is a really interesting stat here that the next day, Boxing Day, almost 50% of searches happen on mobile. This is the heaviest period we see all year. So if we haven't emphasized already how important mobile should be in your strategy, this one stat right here should solidify the deal for you. What is surprising is that 70% of online travel agency bookings are for last minute days. You probably have seen this on your end, but what can we do about that? This data has been pulled from Google Consumer Survey, and this was done about this time last year, so October 2015. And what we did is we asked the audience if they had their travel arrangements ready. 46% of those who plan to travel had not finalized their travel arrangements. This means that we still have an opportunity to influence their decisions and you can still be part of their travel. So destinations and home state or within driving distance are the amongst most searched in the summertime. Aussies love to stay close to home. It's likely probably due to last minute planning. Uh, I know for myself that's generally the reason why I say <laughs> do a last minute weekend trip away. But you can see a lot of it is within states. So what we have here is a few states, New South Wales for example, Victoria, Queensland, and WA. And you can see some of the top search queries within there. They're all within the state, highlighted in blue there. <laughs> so that's places like Byron Bay, Gold Coast, New South are some really popular destinations there. So you can use this information knowing that Australians like to stay local for your marketing strategy and have a strategy around this. So 
So we also see last minute planners. They have they really fall into two segments. Some are considering destinations off the beaten path. Uh, I didn't know that Southern Australia or Tasmania is considered off the beaten path because I've definitely been to Tasmania a few times and I love it. <laughs> While others are after some of the more popular summer resorty destinations, such as the Gold Coast or Coffs Harbour. Knowing that there are different audiences within your target market with different desires and travel goals, you can tailor your marketing strategy and material accordingly to meet these different segments. But what about international travelers? Australians love to go overseas as well. It turns out last minute travelers who prefer an international destination are more likely to go to places that are reachable with a direct flight. So these are places like Bali, New Zealand, Fiji, Thailand, Hawaii. It may be because they're short on time, they booked it last minute. So they don't want to waste time with layovers, things like that. They want something still relatively close to home, but want to mix it up a bit. So what can we take away from the summer and last minute travel decisions? What to really keep in mind when we're planning our summer marketing activities? So this summer, as I've said multiple times, you'll find Australians on mobile. We saw a huge spike in mobile across the industry, particularly in summertime and particularly on weekends. For summer holidays, there's no place like not too far from home. Travelers are staying within state. They're doing cheeky family long weekends away. So target that. And last minute holiday planning and mobile are huge overlap and a perfect match. So have a strategy in place for that as well. Beyond last minute local travel and local travel, Aussies love to go abroad, as I said. What is exciting is that Aussies are still keen to travel despite weaker currency at the time. So this data was pulled from Google Consumer Survey last year, where we asked Australians which destination would they travel to in the summer. Despite weaker currency at this time, 50% showed their interest in traveling abroad for the holiday. This is places like Europe, Asia, North America, and even New Zealand. Some of the top picks for flights and hotel destinations among Aussies are places like Bali, New Zealand, and London. And we can see that from the graph there on the left with the blue lines. On the right, we have the year-on-year -year growth. So these are places like Hawaii Bang, and Bangkok, which show significant growth. Again, when planning your marketing activities, it would be valuable to follow your consumer's interests and be there in these areas of not only growth, but high volumes as well. What are the most popular search terms that are typed into Google? These are what we call search queries. Let's have a quick look at some of the top search queries used by your customers. This data is taken uh, from this time last year. So this is Q4 2015. And the results, of course, will vary based on the time of year. The size of the query, so the size of the word, represents the relative volume in, tra that tra in the travel category. As you can see from this one, we have Qantas really big at the front there in the middle, Jetstar, Webjet, Virgin, these all are very, very popular terms this time last year. In the accommodation category, we have words such as Airbnb, what if, booking.com, and these ones are the ones that are searched for more often than not. If you could ask, oh, you could also access this data with tools such as Google Trends. And this is something we'll touch on a bit more later on how you can do it yourself. But what this data gives us is a bit more information about how your consumers are using online, what are they searching for, and how you can align your marketing strategy based on what they're looking for. 
to help meet that need. So that brings us nicely into our next section. This is the customer insight. As a business, it is critical to understand what your customers are doing, how they're researching their trips, how they're booking their flights, how they're finding you. So the insights that you'll see in the next few slides have been taken from a tool called Consumer Barometer Survey. And this is something that's just recently, in the last 12 months or so, uh, become externally shareable. What this tool does is give us key audience insights that we can use towards your marketing strategy. The insights have been pulled from a survey question. These ones related to flight, answered by an Australian audience. The question is, how do people first hear about your product? More than 50% have selected that previous experience helped them in awareness. While there is a good percent of users who have heard about a product or service by doing their research. And this research is happening online. When Australians are researching flights, more than 80% of respondents have researched online via a website or whether it be an app. And that's what they've heard of the product that they then went on to purchase. Most respondents research months before they, they actually purchase the ticket. However, at the same time, these users do last minute bookings as well. As a business, it's important for you to be available during all these different research phases. These are the early bird planners and also more of the late, late ones like myself. <laughs> so tools, this is the really exciting part because I've given you a lot of information, a lot of stats, a lot of graphs, but a lot of it has been about this upcoming season, the Christmas time, summer seasonality, so you can implement these initiatives right away. What about other key periods in your business? Whether you have a, a, winter, a, a winter accommodation that you really want to promote, how can you pull data around this to tailor your marketing strategy? So the first tool I'm going to go through is Google Trends. So you can find it at google.com.au slash trends right at the top there. So this shows us how are people searching for your brand? When do search or travel spike? How about your competitors? Where do you stand next to them? Google Trends uses real-time search data to help you gauge your customer's search behavior over time. As you can see on this slide, let's take a closer look, we have three different terms that we're comparing. First one in blue is flights to Fiji, second one in red is holiday Fiji, and third one is yellow, Fiji Resort. The graph shows that consumers have been searching more for the term Fiji Resort compared to the other terms during these key periods during this December. You can also um, as I said, access this information online yourself and put in any, any kind of search terms that you want. You, you can put your brand in, you can put your competitors, and just kind of see where some key opportunities may be and where you should really be focusing your marketing efforts. The next tool, and this is embedded within your Google AdWords account, if you have one with us, it's a keyword planning tool. So what this tool find, does for us is it shows us top searches in a category, which will then also give us our average amounts of searches and give us a suggested bid. So to help take advantage of the seasonality and to better plan and use your marketing budget, this is a great tool to really see where the opportunity may be and then you can plan accordingly. Consumer barometer. Okay, so this is a tool that, yeah, again, it's just become public in the last year or so. And what it does is it shows the person journey from consideration to the actual purchase. We get to know the consumer themselves and what makes them make those decisions. What devices do people use in their everyday lives and how do they use them? Why, where, and when 
Do they watch videos online? Google's Global Interactive 2, the consumer barometer, will help you answer these types of questions. You can filter it out based on geographic area, so we can limit it right down to Australia. And we can ask key questions in there to see how consumers use the internet, how many devices they use per day, key things like that. So when you do develop your marketing strategy, you can keep these initiatives in mind. And the last one, but my favorite, is Think with Google. So this one is a great resource to stay up to date with industry trends, products, tools. You can actually sign up to subscribe. And I know I've got all my family to do it, and I do it too, just to kind of keep up to date with interesting things other companies are doing. You'll find case studies from other businesses, which will help you with best practices. Um, you'll be able to see what's working well, what isn't. Think about what you can use for your own business that's working well in other markets. And you can find this by just typing Sync with Google in your browser or going to syncwithgoogle.com. The Consumer Barometer 2 is also within this section. So if you couldn't find that on the other page, if you go to Sync with Google, there's also a tab there for this as well. So just to really recap, what should we go through today and what can we really get out of it? So industry insights. We saw at the beginning that users are between devices. Whether it be a tablet, a mobile, or desktop, they are bouncing between with over 50% of people starting on one device and finishing on another. And then we're also seeing it's a growing industry. Year after year, we see more and more and more search queries. Particularly, this is being driven by mobile. These are great opportunities to take advantage of with your marketing strategy. And then there's seasonal opportunities. So this is when we're talking about Christmas time, the summer holidays, how Aussies like to stay close within state for last minute planning, but then key areas they like to go abroad. You can have a marketing initiative behind each one of these seasonal opportunities. And then we have top search queries. So these is, this was the, the page that we had with the different size words, so the Jetstar and Qantas on the flight page, the Airbnb on the accommodation one. What are people searching for? What are your users looking for? And how can you meet their need? How can you tailor your marketing strategy to fit for what they're searching for? And then we talked a bit about consumer insights. As we said, follow the consumer. You have your marketing strategy, match them, and that's where you'll see the most success. And then lastly, we went through those four tools at the end there. So that's where we looked at Google, Google Trends, the Keyword Tool Planner in your AdWords account, Consumer Barometer, and then Sync with Google as well. These tools will really help you throughout the year plan for other key periods. I gave you a lot of information about Christmas and summer, but not a lot about winter or any other key period that you might have coming up. So this is where you can do your own research. You can tailor it towards your business and really find your best opportunity. Um, that's all I have for you today. So if we want to open it up to questions, that would be great. Well, that was really great, Brittany. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to have a look through some of the questions. And I think one of the first ones we had, um, someone wanted just to clarify about um, were they using mobile just for queries or queries and booking when it comes to travel? No, good question. So a bit of both. The, the volume, here, find the right slide. The ones I was showing at the beginning with any kind of, if I said search query volume, those were directly from Google search itself. But some of the stats at the beginning I was sharing about the ones coming in on mobile versus desktop, that would be both booking on the website and then also across Google search. Okay, great. Does that answer? Yes. Sir? <laughs> Uh, do you know off the top of your head, or we might need to get back to our audience, about what percentage of seniors are actually using mobile devices? Ooh, I, you know, I don't know that one off the top of my head, but I can send that around to you. It, it's quite high. Um, we, can, we also have something which I find really interesting is on the YouTube side of things, the breakdown of audience, uh, age demographics for YouTube, and also mobile as well. And that it's really surprising how much of the older demographic generations are are on mobile devices, on smartphones. 
but I'll follow up with you with that one after. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, I'll just recap that this webinar will be uh, online. It has been recorded, so tomorrow it will be posted on the AFTA website, so AFTA.com.au. Just follow the navigation to events and webinar, and we'll also put the link for the YouTube video on there. I know for some people it didn't come through clearly, so it will be on there, so you can just click that and view that. And I must apologise about the work going on in the background. You might be able to hear a bit of a chainsaw. Uh, so just waiting. Anyone got some more questions? Well, Brittany obviously did a really great job because we have no... Oh, I've just no confused you more. <laughs> no, it was, it was really great. It was very, very clear and gave a really good oversight um, to the industry. Uh, and I think for us, AFT has taken um, a really strong position on being online so that we can educate consumers about ATAS when and where they're, they're searching for um, travel options. Perfect. So just a reminder that the next webinar will be on the 8th of November. And we'll actually be talking about how um, you can show your ads on Google. Um, so please keep an eye out for our um, EDM and so you can register for that. And if you do have any more questions, please feel free to email that through to either myself, which is joe at after.com.au, or Belinda, belinda at after.com.au, and we will get back to you. So jump online, have a look at this webinar. It'll be available for you tomorrow. And please fill out the survey question that comes out to you. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us and look forward uh, to having you on board for the next webinar. Thank you.